Harry's wife, feed the beast. The narcissist has a voracious appetite for fuel. I'm a narcissistic psychopath, so I am a hybrid of psychopath and narcissist, which means that my fuel needs are not as great as that as a pure narcissist. Sure, I need fuel. I need people to recognize what I do, my brilliance, my nastiness, my f apparent kindness. I require a reaction. But I don't need as much fuel as a pure narcissist, and I don't need it as often as a pure narcissist. One of the benefits of that hybrid status that I have. That means that I can quite readily be away from people for a number of days, perhaps having intermittent electronic communication, but I don't require necessarily approximate involvement. But there comes a time when I must feed, that I must venture amongst people, no matter how much I despise them, in order to provoke them in some way, both good and bad, to generate reactions and thus receive fuel from them. But for the pure narcissist, their task is greater. For them, there is a chasm, an emptiness, at the base of which lurks the creature, reminding them of their foibles, their vulnerabilities and their weaknesses, and it must be silenced through the provision of fuel, kept within the construct, locked away. Each and every day, they must seek out that fuel, an unending quest for the calming fluid that fuel is. That as that fuel flows, it eases that sense of impending doom. It removes the sensation that the walls of the world of the narcissist are falling in on them. It quells the disturbed sensations, pours oil, if you will, on troubled water, until, as more fuel comes, the narcissist starts to feel more settled, then more powerful, then all-conquering, invulnerable, fizzing with power and energy. Each and every day the narcissist must feed, and Harry's wife is no exception to that. Each and every day when she wakes, she experiences the emptiness that sits at the heart of her. She doesn't know what it is because she's unaware. She doesn't know what's making her feel unsettled. She doesn't know what is making her feel this impending sense of doom. This is something whereby she then, generated by her narcissism, needs to seek out that fuel perhaps turning and indulging in some spicy poontang with Harry, saying something nasty to a housekeeper to put them in their place and drawing a reaction from them, that person's startled response or their tears, and then combing social media to see what is being written about her, having contact with the various minions and flunkies that she employs, their kowtowing providing her with more fuel, but she wants more, she needs more. She needs the audiences to clap and cheer her, even though, of course, those are now dwindling and diminishing as a consequence of the fact that she is dull, 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 and increasingly disliked. The beast that is her narcissism must be fed. The fuel must flow. That fuel can be provided in so many different ways. Harry expressing his love. A child reaching out to her, a member of staff praising the way that she looks, a member of staff crying after having been berated by her, a telephone call from a friend asking to meet up for lunch, a flunky saying that there is interest in a new project that she has been touting around town, condemnation across social media networks, another disparaging headline in a mainstream news. All of these things provide fuel. A gift sent from a sugar provides fuel. Supportive comments on a blog from the sugars provides her with fuel. Lampooning by a particular program maker provides her with fuel. She needs this fuel. 
and her narcissism is designed to compel her to seek it out each and every day. And it is evident that her hunger increases, because we see now this greater level of desperation that the beast needs to be fed. For example, we had only a day ago the apparent video going viral of her apparently dealing with an interruption in an interview. An interview from some eight years ago. A boring interview. An interview of no consequence. Yet, it's touted around to suggest that it has gone viral to try and generate attention. Because attention equates to fuel. And then we have had, from the Daily Express, two instances of videos. The first dragging up an old interview from a number of years ago again where she talks about where she's asked about the comparison between her and Gwyneth Paltrow's lifestyle brand old news uninteresting but brought up once again and then another video again courtesy of the express in relation to Holt Renfrew where she has this video which shows her apparently as a flirtatious actress. A video that was made in collaboration with Canadian luxury brand has resurfaced, apparently, showing her life, what her life was like pre-Harry. It's a video clip taken in 2015, one year before she met Prince Harry, and gives a glimpse into her life before she became royalty. It was made in collaboration with Canadian luxury department store Holt Renfrew and it walks the viewer through a day in the life of Harry's wife when she was an actress living in Toronto, Canada. Undoubtedly very boring. It begins with Harry's wife leaving a hotel while looking at her phone and sipping a coffee before she pretends to notice the interviewer and cheerfully greets them. She tells the audience she is about to show them her favourite spots in Toronto. You'll have noticed this about Harry's wife that she has no meaningful insight to offer about anything other than parading you around cafes, restaurants, travel destinations, clothing, shoes, handbags, food. Things that other people have created. She doesn't sit down and offer you some pithy insight into the state of the nation. She doesn't provide you with a comedic take upon the latest clash between two politicians. No. What she deals in is what other people have produced that, what other, that she can commandeer. Light, fluffy, ephemeral stuff. And of course, in this instance, this dull video from eight years ago is another one that has been dredged up and, for a supposed body language expert, tell us all about what it means. I'm going to spare you the dullness of that assessment, but the point is this. Over the last two days, three instances have arisen of old videos apparently resurfacing and being described as going viral. This shows how hungry the beast is, how the beast is failing to get the level of fuel that it requires, that it resorts to this tactic of old videos, years old videos, which of themselves are not particularly interesting, other than allowing examination to show her narcissism in action, which are then dredged up for the purposes of pumping them out alongside PR puff pieces. The fact that there have been three in two days shows that increasing level of desperation and just how much she needs to feed the beast. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.